And welcome RC Shimenaya. Planning to do a quick update and I wanted to share some findings with you. So first the findings. For my DJI antenna testing, I wanted a GPS capable copter and I rediscovered the SG3025 in the last year already. But now I had to change to the full size air unit of course. I will tell you in a later video why this is so, why exactly, but yeah, just know that I rebuilt it, it's nice and I can show you a few pictures. And what I wanted to accomplish, I mean my flight control doesn't have a lot of free UARTs, none to be exact, but nonetheless if it has INAV and the GPS module connected, you can do return to home of course, which is a safety feature. And you can also do waypoint missions. But how do you do waypoint missions? Uh, if you have no telemetry link or control possibility, you have to preset a waypoint course, waypoint track, and upload it to the flight control. And when you're flying, you just switch a button, an assigned button, channel 8 in my case. And then the copter flies from waypoint one until the last and then you can decide if it should return to home or just stay there. So that should be optimal for my antenna tests to fly predefined routes, always the same. And I was very curious. And here is the thing, here are a few tips if you want to do waypoint missions, which is very cheap because those like if you get just some, I have this lying around here, if you get just uh, some flight control that is compatible with INAV, you should check this, and if you have a GPS module, and they're also quite cheap, then you basically have everything you need. You just need to connect this correct, and then you have a copter that can fly on its own. And it seems like it's still, and I think Pavel Spichalski would agree, I think it's still preferable to use INAV over beta flight if you plan to do a lot of GPS stuff. So that all being said, let's check check the list of tips that I noted while it, it took me quite some time to figure it out, to be honest. So the first thing you need to know is if you want to fly or arm such a GPS enabled INAV copter, it has a lot of pre-flight checks and it won't let you arm if something isn't right. And one thing that is the yeah, the most common thing that isn't right when you want to arm is you don't have GPS fix. So if it doesn't have a GPS fix, a return to home wouldn't work and a fly away could occur. So they decided to lock the arming feature until GPS fix is uh, acquired. But you also see this when you connect it with the INAV configurator, you see this checklist and see which mark is red and which is green. So you should have GPS fix. And then one important thing, if you want to use waypoint missions, the first waypoint, this is also a safety feature, the first waypoint must not be further away than a predefined number of meters, or they also state it in, in centimeters, which is a bit annoying, but yeah. So there is a certain variable and you, Maybe you find this in the INF configurator, you for sure find this in the CLI section of the INF config. It's nav underscore wp underscore safe underscore distance. So navigation waypoint safe distance. And while I read the default is 10 meters, for me it was defaulting at 100 meters. But still, in my thinking, and my thinking was wrong, um, my first waypoint, I said it like let's say an estimated 50 meters in front of my flight field, in front of my takeoff spot, but it still wouldn't arm and I couldn't get my head around it. Why wouldn't it arm? It's only 50 meters. Then I started thinking three dimensional <laughs> and on the waypoint you also have to define the altitude. And to be safe, I set an altitude of 100 meters <laughs> and you know, the distance, uh, it's uh, Pythagoras. <laughs> it's more than 100 meters if you're 50 meters. Yeah. So. Uh, you can either increase this minimum uh, nav waypoint distance to like 200 meters or you just set the first waypoint like 50 meters in front of you and then only 30 or 40 meters of altitude. And the way and the, th 
the reason why I set the altitude to 100 meters is because I didn't trust the altitude accuracy that much. But since this thing also has a barometer, altitude is quite good. And it's also relative, always relative to your home location starting altitude. And then to load your waypoints, you have to do a certain stick command. Throttle down and pitch roll all the way to the right upper. This just for one or two seconds tells the flight control to load the waypoints you defined earlier from its EEPROM to the flight control's current memory. And here's the thing. You can also just attach your phone, set the waypoints and save them just in the normal memory of the flight control. But then something doesn't work and you unplug and replug and the waypoints are lost. So the normal memory is not a permanent memory. So I had to define the waypoints on my phone, save them to flight control and then save them to EEPROM. And here's another thing I learned. If you just hit save to EEPROM, it always saves the stuff that is in the flight controls memory and saves it to EEPROM, which can be confusing because if you want to change to other waypoints, you always have the last mission in it. Then the next time you fly, plug it in with the stick command, you tell the copter to load the waypoints from the EEPROM which is the permanent memory just. And I think it has like 60, 60 possible waypoints, which are more than enough. Yeah, don't use too much waypoints. Use only like two or three, because how I set it up, and maybe that's not the good way to set it up, on each waypoint, it, it stops there, turns left, right, and thinks about where to go, and then flies further. So if you have a lot of waypoints, it will be very slow. And you also can set the speed on each waypoint and i set it to around 36 kilometers or 10 meters per second yeah that's good so yeah that's basically all you need uh, i used the speedy adapter with wi-fi connected to the flight control use the speedy up here and set up the waypoints you can set the defaults of the waypoints default uh, altitude and speed so you don't have to reset it on each waypoint and I found like 30 or 40 meters of altitude is a good default value and like I said around 10 meters per second which is 36 kilometers. Uh, in terms of flight modes I programmed only a few things on this copter. Of course I have one mode switch, a three pass switch between acroflight um, level mode and GPS mode. GPS mode is more like navigation altitude hold and position hold. That's what it's called in INAV. On a two position switch, I have GPS return home, which is very handy and very reassuring. On another switch, I have the waypoint switch. And as soon as you enable this waypoint switch, it flies to the first waypoint until you switch the waypoint off again. Then it stops the mission. And when you switch it on again, it starts again from the first waypoint. That's something you should probably know. Uh, of course, it's also a good idea if you overlay sound files to the switches on your OpenTX uh, radio. And I found a nice way to produce my own voice files with text-to-speech. And it's really easy once you get it right. The really very confusing step was I needed to take one of those WAV files off my Tango and open it up and kind of delete everything there and put my text-to-speech track into there. And I used a program Audacity, which is freeware, and saved the same WAV file. Creating a new WAV file with exactly the like specifications that they tell you, it didn't work, it didn't play it. So take an existing WAV file and save it as it should be. There are instructions, and then it's good to go. And it's really nice to have yeah, your own. And yesterday I flew like the same waypoint missions three times in a row. And I will show you the overlay now. It's quite accurate. I mean, the altitude was a bit inaccurate on the first attempt. But yeah, it, it, it kind of like flies the same curse three times. I locked the GPS data on the SD card on the black box lock here. Black box lock is also a nice thing. You can convert black box boxes with one little program to GPX files and then you can load the GPX files into Google Earth Pro. So really excited for this thing, being able to fly waypoint missions and being able 
Help me test. Strange antenna. Things like this. Death ray. <laughs> a guy from Sweden sent it. Uh, very much appreciated. There will be a full review and of course a, a test, but yeah, it's like seven ton helicals, four of them in a good direction. Very excited to fly far with this. So thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for supporting me. And this just in. I need to know with another one. Nico. Hello Nico. And of course, hello Daniel and Thomas and Velo Stuka. I hope I get it right. Velo is the first pledger with a $20 pledge, which is amazing. I don't know why you do this, but I love it. And I defined it in my Patreon page that if you spend like 20 bucks a month, uh, you get a permanent sticker or a permanent whatever on my wall. So guys, be creative. It shouldn't be too large. Stay, stay humble. <laughs> but yeah, really, I mean, Velo will send a sticker and it will probably end up on my logo wall here. So, Nico. Nico from Bavaria. Nice to meet you. Thanks for your support. It's really this little chalkboard here reminds me on why this hobby is so amazing and why I love working for this channel rather than <laughs> working for my. Uh, I don't. I should get it dropped. Uh, thanks a lot for this. Yeah, I really love to see the community on my Patreon page growing and I will start posting more regular content there and I don't know if it will be a lot of membership only benefits there because it's yeah I want to I rather want to share it here on the channel and just thank you guys for for your shown support thanks a lot See you next time. I'm very excited to test all these antennas. I'm, right now I'm working on a, a cool method to like have a lot of DJI SRT files automatically converted to Excel and automatically generate charts for me. So I can do a lot of measurements without having too much work afterwards because it's really... So now that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now. No, there's one more thing. I will fly if the weather is fine, if weather permits. I will fly my nice rare bear once again. Is it in? Yeah, it's like 4S Reno Racer thing. It's really a lot of fun. I re enabled it with a receiver, and there will be our Sturmfliegen this weekend where our local club meets up and there is some beverage called Sturm in Austria. It's, is it apple cider? Something like apple, apple cider, you could say. And it's normally in the autumn, it's stormy, so it's Sturmfliegen. Maybe I'll do a video about this as well. Thanks a lot now. Bye for now. Please subscribe and also use the bell icon to get notifications when I upload new videos.